Hey, it's Robert Chicken with Space and Equity, where we're all about increasing assets and creating new space. Here today with the best barber on the planet, Mr. Sean Potts of the Texas Advancement Center. He's the director of the Barber College here, amongst many things. And today we have a great conversation about Ghost 2, all that has to go with that, and also what you got going on, man. What you got going on, Sean, besides cutting hair, leading this yeah. Barber College? We won't get into those things, but before we do that, we got to talk about that last, last episode. Man, crazy. Crazy. I, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so here's here's my challenge. Okay. I'm trying to figure out when are they going to kill Drew's boyfriend. I think it's coming this episode. Because oh, he was ready to do it. And then all of a sudden he got a text message from him. Then then now he can't execute. But there's no turning back. I, there's not a there's not a way to save this young man's life at this point. Is it? Mm, yeah, he in too deep. Um, I think what they've been doing is just building up, I guess, the the feelings between him and Drew. Mm-hmm. That way, when they when they do knock him off, it's gonna impact Drew so much mm-hmm. that he probably gonna go psycho. He may do something crazy. Okay, okay. I don't know what to, to make of Monet and her decision making, but I'm trying to figure out how it's any better than Kane's decision making. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I don't know how to. You know, like, okay, so what's Dude, what's uh, Method's, the the lawyer met the man, but in the show, the attorney. Um, man, what is his name? Oh, uh, neither here nor there. We'll, yeah, we know. We'll, we'll, we know who we're talking about. When he's in the car, he was like, "Tell Monet, I said what's up." It, at first, you think it's an indictment of Kane, but it's really like y'all two peas in the pot. Y'all both don't know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You need, if if Tyreek go down, y'all go down. Sloppy. Just sloppy. To me, one of the biggest things I think where they messed up is they didn't do their proper homework on who they're messing with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to come back and bite them in the butt. Yeah. And then you see in this next episode to come, his solution is robbing Mecca. Yeah. That's a death sentence for somebody. I'm gonna put like this. I um I seen some some teasers that there's gonna be a major death. The question mm-hmm. is who? And they said it's gonna happen in episode eight. So And this is episode eight coming up? Yeah. Yeah. So what you thinking? I'm thinking, well, it's not Tyreek. Does Mecca draw this back to Monet? And say, look, you, first you try to keep me from my son. Now you're trying to steal my product. This is just this is a bridge too far. Mm. Let me tell you who I think it may be. Mm-hmm. I think it's a strong possibility that it could be Diana, Monet. I don't consider Everett a major character, so I think I think he's gonna go anyway. Mm-hmm. Or Professor Milgram. Mm. Seems like it's kind of early for Professor Milgram to go down because she's still got to take some more heat for the what she did to the the student, the little girl that. Oh yeah, 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 Lauren. She got Lauren's gonna get her back in some way. Hmm. I heard somebody say too. What about the possibility of Kane? Professor Milgram? No, oh, uh, him getting killed in this episode. Oh, it's possible. I mean. He's no longer, Mecca's already removed him from the equation. He's going directly to his pops and uh, and his brother. Mm-hmm. So what does he need? Uh, that would be, that would speak to why he was so willing to rob Mecca. Like, it also speaks to his stupidity. He knows how ruthless Mecca is. He killed old boy just off of principal and you gonna rob him and be a part of it it'd be different if he's throwing Tyreek in there to get him killed but I think that's the, the that's even more the possibility of why it is it's realistic that he could die this episode you okay. know what I'm saying like I'm like what what else does this character serve like what other purpose does this character serve at this point but then also how does it escalate the storyline 
that he dies. With with Monet dying this episode, there's a lot of angles you can take at. Like, does that mean that now Mecca and her husband are at odds, are going to war? Is it, it's gonna be a surprise. So it's gonna be somebody we're not expecting, but mm -hmm. a major. So, okay, and you're right. With Monet, I can see Monet dying, because you look at it like this. Diana's about to come out with this information. Mm -hmm. She's about to spill the beans and tell you know tell all of everything that's going on. I can see Monet getting to the point to where she's upset and doing something to Diana. Yeah, and I can see in retaliation Lorenzo doing something to Monet. Okay, like kind of like a, a double homicide mm -hmm. type something. I can really see that. They said it's gonna be something crazy that's gonna make you spit your water out your mouth. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Huh. So in family. Yeah, man, and part, part of the episode was a little slow to me because I guess I was expecting it to develop in a way to understand where Tyreek's story is going further, but it, that didn't really develop at all. Mm -hmm. All we got was more into Drew being woven into the storyline at a deeper level and, and Mecca taking a step to introduce himself to his son. And what's that? What's gonna come of that? Okay, so is Mecca really like a, a real chess player in the in this in this series, or is he just like another Lobos or uh, Milan? And I'm starting to think maybe he just may be a Milan or Lobos or you know the Jimenez cartels okay. where they play a big part, but they're expendable. Yeah, at, at, at the end of the day, if this is goes to the whole the, the store. The story circulates around Tyreek. Mm -hmm. So somehow Tyreek will have to continue to get elevated. You had to, when the series first started, you had to explain why Ghost was Ghost. Right, right. And so in this one, they're explaining how Tyreek is coming into the baby version of Ghost. Right, right. And now they're even doing the illusions like, well, if you don't take care of it now, he's gonna be more ruthless than his dad ever was. Right. And I think that's where we're, they're gonna take us down that path. Hmm. So man, we could talk about this show all day, but uh, I wanna transition to all the many things that you got your hands in. Okay. And why it's important for artists like yourself to handle the, the fiscal side or organize the fiscal side and how you've done that. So first tell us about the transition from the traditional barbershop to the Texas Advancement Center and leading the Barber College. How's that been for you? Man, it's been great. Um, one thing I can say though, it hasn't been easy. Uh -huh. And what I mean by that is it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a mental challenge because it's like, you know, you go from cutting heads every day to running a school, writing out the curriculum, you know, dealing with multiple personalities and it's, a, <laughs> you definitely gotta be on top of your game. Uh -huh. So um, I, I've liked it so far, you know what I'm saying? I've learned a lot. And I can honestly say I'm not even the same person that I was a year ago when I left. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've, I've grown, I've developed, you know what I'm saying? I've got under a few people's tutelages and, and, and been learning, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. been taking advice from a lot of good mentors. So yeah, it's been a great experience. So far, so good. And you think that those, uh, Kind of the, the growing pains that have existed in making the transition and the growth that you have made, that wouldn't have been feasible staying in the same place you were? No. Okay. No. And, you know, and, and it's nothing, you know, it's no shot at where I was, you know, that's my family and everything like that. But my vision, you know, where I wanted to be, you know, in the industry and stuff like that, it's, it, it required me to take a step, yeah. you know, a leap of faith. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't expect it to go that route. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My my whole vision was always to have my barbershop and all that first. And then later down the road, you know, do a whole school, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, when my, my, my business partner and good friend came to me with the, the idea, I really had to pray about it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not even gonna lie, I kind of doubted myself at times and it was like, you know, like Lord, you sure you're talking to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, I just, I just took that step of faith and hey, here we go. How did you recognize the signs that it was time? Did Or what signals would, did you receive that, hey, transition is here, I need to do something? To be honest, I start getting uncomfortable. Mm. 
you know, and it's just, and I had a, you know, one of my mentors told me that a long time ago, you know, sometimes when we've been in a place too long, mm -hmm. we ought to start making things uncomfortable around us, making our yeah. surroundings just, you know, uneasy. And it's not that you're doing anything wrong, but it's just, it's time for elevation. Uh -huh. It's just like a plant yeah. that the roots have filled up the pot. You know, it's going to get tight. It's going to be a tight squeeze. Some leaves may start dying off uh -huh. and all it needs is, it, it just needs to be repotted into wow. a bigger plant. Wow. I mean, to a bigger, uh, to a bigger pot. And mm -hmm. that's really what it was, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's how that, that transpired. And has there been a time in your life where the discomfort came, but you didn't embrace it? And this time you did, what was the difference? Mm. Man, honestly, I looked at I looked at a couple of things. For one, I'm like, man, I'm not no spring chicken no more. You know, the time is is, is ticking. Mm -hmm. I started seeing a lot of people around me getting sick. Uh, a few people passed away at young ages. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, if I don't do it now, then I don't think, you know, the opportunity, would, you know, it, well, it's never going to happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like you you have to at some point take that step and say, hey, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? If not, I feel like I, just, I was just going to keep making excuses over and over and over again. You know, why I couldn't do it or mm -hmm. waiting for that perfect opportunity. When you're making such a transition like this, and you are betting on yourself. You know you're being elevated. Mm -hmm. You're expanding. How do you manage people, the surroundings? and evaluating those people around you. What do you do to make sure that you're protecting your your sanctuary? I'm big on energy. Um, you know, what's the saying? If you're the smartest person in the room, you probably need to change circles. Yeah. Um, it became one of those things. And it's, you know, like I said, no shade or anything like that. to a lot of my friends because, you know, I love them all dearly, mm -hmm. but I had to look at my, my circle and see, like, is it individuals in my circle that's either on the same path on the things that I want, or is it people in my circle that have more than what I have? Mm -hmm. And once I look, looked at that, I was like, hmm, I think there's some things that I'm gonna have to change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and it's just like, if I'm trying to be a millionaire, you know, I can't talk to a, a homeboy or a homegirl of mine that's, you know, <laughs> you know, struggling to make this or this or that, you know, yeah. I gotta go surround myself with people who's doing it, Yeah. you know, so that way, you know, I can let, get some of that good energy and rub it off on, on myself. But yeah. So we're just all about my circle. Okay. Changing my circle. Hmm. What do you what do you find yourself doing when you're realizing somebody is trying to steal that good energy or be a time suck? How do you transition out of that? Mm -hmm. I moonwalk out that thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm at a point now like in the nicest way, I just back off. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I back off. Um, and it's not even that I just, you know, being a butthole or anything like that, but it's just, you know, I may not talk to that individual as much. You know what I'm saying? Um, I may say, hey, I'm busy. But it's the truth. It's not It's not like I'm lying. Yeah. But it's just, you know, I just turn my attention to, to things that are more important. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. You know, I may not be able to go out this weekend. I may not be able to do this or do that. And then eventually they get tired of asking. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a few things under on your plate. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got this. You've got your, you're, you're still managing your customers. Mm -hmm. You're training these future barbers. Right. And then you got Texas International Hair Show. How did that, how has that grown in your life? And what are your responsibilities there? Okay. So let me tell you the story about Texas International Hair Show. So that started out with, me just competing years ago. Okay. Um, I, I was just a competitor. I, I lost more battles than probably what I won. Um, start building my name over the years, you know, finally start winning some battles, mm -hmm. start traveling, you know, around the country and things like that. And people start seeing me. Mm -hmm. So what happened was um, I did that for a few years. In 2015, I ended up winning um, I, I did, uh, what is it, T.D. Jakes, the Mega Fest. Okay. And I ended up winning that battle, and that was supposed to be my last battle. You know, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna hang it up and retire, and that's what it is. So I did win the battle, you know what I'm saying? So maybe about a year after that, no, a couple of years after that, I wasn't doing anything. I got a call from, um, matter of fact, it was, 
Lady J had messaged me and said that I was, uh, um, I had been nominated for um, Barber of the Year at the Local Love Awards. Mm -hmm. So once that had happened, you know what I'm saying? I'm super excited because it's like, you know, to be, you know, mentioned with a lot of other great barbers and yeah. stuff like that, you know, it was like, wow. That was unexpected. Mm -hmm. So I was just happy, happy to be in the building. So the Expo is an annual event that brings yes, together sir. all barbers, beauticians in the region, really in the country. Yes, sir. And what, what's the purpose? What's the end goal of that event? Uh, really, it, it's, it has a lot of goals, you know what I'm saying? A lot of end goals. It's really just to bring awareness to the, the cultural change, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, new products. Um, what's hot in our community, whether it's fashion, hair, um, health, you know, we, we bring all those things to the table. And it's just, you know, just a platform to just constantly keep people engaged with what's happening. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that's what we do. You're an artist as well. You're a musician as well. Mm -hmm. How do you manage those and structure those verticals so that you are maximizing each area to the best of its ability. Everything has a time and a place. Okay. Everything has a time and a place. So like, for example, um, well, let me, let me rewind a little bit. Everything has a time and a place. And then I had to realize that there's only 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. So I can't stay up any later. So yeah. That means I gotta get up earlier. So it went from a, a point of me, you know, waking up at, you know, seven, then it went to 6.30, went to six, went to 5.30, went to, you know, 4.45, now I'm at 4.30. Mm -hmm. Every morning I get up at 4.30, you know what I'm saying? So to answer your question, um, I have certain days that I do certain things, certain times. Uh, I'm learning to be more organized, learning to be more disciplined. Um, those are all things that kind of help me juggle all the things. Mm -hmm. um, so say, for example, um, let's say I painting, for example, all my painting I, I'll do in the evening. Okay. So like I have class, you know, in the morning time. So no, I take that back. I get here early in the morning. I work on all like my, uh, my paperwork and things like that, whether we got new students and stuff like that. Then I have class at 9.30, from 9.30 to 11.30. And then from that time until one, you know, eat a little lunch and try to get some more work done. Then I cut hair from one to six. And after that, I'm working on some of my other businesses, whether it's painting, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a vending machine company as well, kind mm -hmm. of working on that, you know, working on the music stuff. So yeah, my, my day stays pretty, pretty, pretty packed. What kind of support do you have in place or would you like in place to keep the business organized? And I mean, like from, um, from what standpoint? From like, whether it be accounting, insurance, those ancillary tools that are necessary to keep you progressing and projecting what your growth can be. Um, man, I, I, I have a few different things, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, uh, we're living in a day and age, man, technology is everything. Mm -hmm. So me just learning how to mm -hmm. utilize tools that's on my phone, uh, whether it's calendars, alarms, um, you know, just, um, I'm working on a, a new site right now to, to, to make it more efficient for my clients to book. So that'll free me up for some, from some time, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's quite a few tools that I use, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, and then another thing is, it's not only like from a digital standpoint, just allowing people that I trust to help. Yeah. And that was the biggest thing because my problem at, at at one point is I would try to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I think me and you talked about that before, learning how to delegate, you know, yeah. assignments and stuff. So yeah. I've been, you know, learning to work with people and, and you know, don't try to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you grow into this calendar year and the next, what do you want to see enhanced in, in your overall operations? Uh, efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, our goal this year uh, at Texas Advancement Center is to have uh, 175 new students okay. just in my program. Mm -hmm. um, I've made, I, I made my vision board out. I, I, I got, I need to do 10 paintings <laughs> this year. Mm -hmm. um, I plan on, you know, backing away a little bit from, you know, cutting 
And but I'm still going to open up my shop and use that as a platform, you mm -hmm. know, for my barbers. So I'm just going to send my students straight over to my barber school. I mean, my barber shop. OK, um, man. Yeah, I got, I got quite a few things. I'm, uh, I got my product line. I'm about to relaunch here within the next couple of months. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a few. Awesome. Quite a few things. Awesome. Awesome. So you've had an opportunity to sit on uh, the board at Space and Equity. What have you what have you learned in that space? Plug in, plug in my, my own organization. What have you <laughs> learned from that that experience so far? Man, um, it's been a, it's been an amazing experience so far because I'm, I'm getting plugged in with so many other talented individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying uh, just like, for example, you know, when we went to the game, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying and, and to be able to talk to so many other people who are doing this and doing that, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying um, that was amazing, you know, and definitely a, a learning experience. Um, even just our board meetings, you know, seeing how other people think, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying what's important to other people, because I, I may see things from one perspective, but, you know, you or somebody else may see something from a completely different perspective. And yeah. all of the answers are right. It's just this is how I see it. This yeah. is how you see it. Yeah, and that's that's it's kind of mind boggling, but it's just like, wow, yeah. you know, it's so many great minds mm -hmm. all together in, in a big boiling pot. And it's just. Yeah, it makes you, you know, I, I got to get my stuff together. You know? <laughs> yeah. What do you think about business and teams? What's your philosophy about working as a group? If you just said it, got to learn how to work as a team. You know, you got to trust people. You know what I'm saying? You know, if somebody's going to do what they're going to do, then they have to, you have to trust that they're going to do it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, sometimes I know we want to micromanage. But if you are a team, sometimes you got, you got to believe that that person is, is going to do it. Um, now, when it comes to teams, I say that you just have to be you have to have a team that that's trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to know that, hey, if me, you, you know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. and somebody else, we all supposed to be doing something. Everybody has to, to bring their best foot, foot forward and everybody has to, to bring what they're going to bring to the table. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. and I feel like as long as everybody on the same page, then you know, hey, you go out there and go get it. Awesome. Awesome. So, if Monet is going down this season, what's happening with, what's, what's happening on the last episode? Where is Tyreek in his quest to be Ghost 2? Tyreek, 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 Tyreek. I think Tyreek is, um, hmm, the last episode or the episode coming up? The last episode. How is Tyreek getting out of his legal situation right now? And Technicality. Get back to okay. Technicality. You know, it's a lot of mess going on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be one of those situations, um, you know, they're going to find out that some of the, uh, the the witnesses has probably been sleeping with everybody on, on the stand and, yeah. and that's associated with the thing and evidence tampered with and the judge ain't going to have no choice but throw it out. Okay. What you think? I def I agree with the technicality. I think they're gonna use Lauren as that. They've already segued into. Oh, I saw your your client at the other attorney's spot mm -hmm. getting advice and sharing that she was basically bamboozled into. And what did Davis McQueen say? McQueen, he said he told Carrie Milgram. He said, you've already slept with four people associated with this case. Yeah, she's slept with the attorney. That, that, I mean, that, the, the cop. If that comes out. The the dead. Yeah, if, if that, so it's Davis McQueen. Who else she didn't slept with? Um, the, the professor. The cop, the the white cop. Yeah, and uh, who else? Oh, Zeke. And Zeke, yeah. Zeke. So she ain't, she, she ain't coming out unscathed. So that's mm -hmm. a witness on both sides. That's, that's, you know. Mm -hmm.
So folks go on social media, where they, where they got to go to find you? Oh, if you're on IG, you can check us out at TAC Barber College or check us out at Texas Advancement Center. Hey, get, get it rolling. Space and Equity, all about increasing assets and creating new space. Check us out on YouTube at Space and Equity. You pull that in, you'll pull us up. Check us out, like, and subscribe at the website, spaceequitycorp.com. You can register for Field of the Boardroom right on the website. We're gonna have a great event February 18th through the 20th, bringing like-minded people together and growing each other's businesses in a great environment. You can also check us out on Instagram at ob underscore empowers. Come correct and they can't stop you.